Today I want to share with you a few things I've discovered on my path to peace and prosperity. My top five life hacks for how to live your best life starting today. Now, because I'm a total book nerd, I will also have a book recommendation or three for each topic. Full transparency, I feel a little imposter syndrome happening trying to talk about this topic. I'm not a guru, I'm not a life coach, I'm just a middle-aged suburban housewife trying to find my path to my best life. Oh, and I'm Heather by the way. <laughs> so let's start the conversation. All right, hack number one is to know what you want. Most of us have been raised with the mindset that being goal-oriented is the methodology for a successful life. From our daily to-do list to our five-year goals, a lot of us have been trained to associate the achievement of a goal with happiness. But we know there are lots of people who are great at rocking their goals, but still feel empty, anxious, disappointed. How many of us have a list of how we want to feel in our lives? One of the best pieces of guidance I've ever received is from Danielle Laporte, author of many things, but in this case, the Firestarter Sessions and also the Desire Map. She suggests making your plans based on how you wanna feel in your life, rather than what you think you wanna have, or what having that thing or accomplishing that thing is going to give you. It's a compass that has rarely steered me wrong since I've started using it. For instance, when I started my dream job in real estate years ago, I had to do a little soul searching. Am I hustling for a paycheck? Is it worth making a great living if I never see my kids? Is there a way to have a meaningful, lucrative career and be a badass mom who has time to bake the cookies? It turns out the answer is, yeah, it is possible. But I do have to set that as my intention and then pay attention and be present. This is so much different than focusing on like a dollar amount that I wanna bring in that year or a certain number of deals that I wanna do. I do that too, but that's folded into how does that fit into the life that I'm creating. A few great books I recommend reading in this area are, I already mentioned the Firestarter Sessions and the Desire Map by Danielle Laporte. I also wanna give a shout out to The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. The Big Leap is essential reading for anyone who wants to level up in life. It's gonna help you identify what those things are that are blocking you in really relatable, practical ways. Okay, hack number two is to heal your relationship with money. Working in real estate and helping people build wealth, I get to see firsthand how so many of us have a hard time leveling up in life financially. It's not that we don't want to on some level, but we have this internal thermostat whose job is to keep us comfortably living with what we were raised to expect. This means that even if we were raised in an unhappy environment, on some level that's familiar to us, so on some level it feels safe. These issues crop up in every aspect of our lives, but in my experience, I've had to confront my own limiting beliefs most directly when it comes to building wealth. Part of that is also the confusing cultural narrative that we've been conditioned by. Let me know if any of these sound familiar. The love of money is the root of all evil. <laughs> okay, I need money to live, so what do I do with that? Another classic is that rich people are jerks. Yeah, I don't wanna be a jerk. So should I just push my desires for an awesome life aside and be content? And there's always the classic, money can't buy happiness. I believe that part of happiness is solving problems and money solves a lot of problems. There are so many great books about dealing with your issues with money, but the one that's had the biggest impact on my husband Robert and I is You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. Also, for some super practical advice on getting started investing, I highly recommend Unshakable by Tony Robbins. He is not my go-to guru at all, but this book was so practical, helpful, and informative. I can't help it, I gotta recommend it. Okay, hack number three is to work to create a life that's meaningful to you. We are in a bit of a crisis of meaning brought on by the information revolution that we're currently living through. So many of us, the world we were brought up to believe in keeps getting torn to pieces. Well, I personally believe that our institutions of meaning do need to be shaken up so that they can be rebuilt and reformed. Living through that process is incredibly disorienting. What that sort of means on the day-to-day -day level 
is that for most of us, a deep and meaningful life has to be created by each individual. For me, it looks like from the awesome honor it is to raise my kids to the career I've chosen, how I choose to serve, and the people I choose to love and spend my time with. These are all ways I'm creating a life that may be small, but it feels significant. Recommended reading for this topic is The Power of Meaning by Emily S. Fahani Smith. All right, hack number four is practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is such a trendy buzzword in our modern world and is honestly the thing on this list that in some ways I struggle with the most. There are so many different ways to do this, but the two that I'm currently working on are meditation and breathing. I know, right? Breathing! It is seriously astounding to me how much breathing influences our mental state, our awareness, and how we feel. Doesn't this just make you wanna take a deep breath right now? I love this quote from Fritz Perls, MD, the psychiatrist and founder of Gestalt Therapy. He said, fear is excitement without the breath. Recommended reading for this topic is How to Meditate by Pema Chodron and Breath by James Nestor. Okay, hack number five is to get going already. One of the common misconceptions about living an amazing life is that it's just gonna appear out of nowhere. That's how it works on TV, right? Because we don't have time to watch the years of effort, we only come into the stories on the juicy part. Action, when it's paired with our intentions, our desires, meaning it's literally where the rubber meets the road. And I don't really believe in goal setting anymore, not the kind I was raised with and failed at for most of my life, but I do believe I'm a co-creator of my own life and to some extent, the world that we all share. And when I'm really tuned in and fired up, showing up for my life feels easy and natural. It's work, of course it is, but it's mostly work that I love to do. Now, I am probably the world's biggest procrastinator and my husband Robert and I are both on the ADD spectrum somewhere. And creating structure is something that's been really challenging for both of us. But just because you aren't naturally good at something doesn't mean it's out of reach. Do the work to understand what skills you need to acquire to accomplish your goals and make that a part of your plan. Saying to yourself, I'm learning to create structure in my life is a lot more fun than saying to yourself, gosh, I suck at creating structure. I guess I just can't have the things I want. Okay, recommended reading for this topic is Atomic Habits by James Clear, as well as the procrastination articles by Tim Urban on the Wait But Why blog that I've linked to in the description below. So tell me, what are your hacks for living a great life? Let me know in the comments.